governor. The election is the first since the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in 2011. Six candidates were vi vying for the post. Among them are the former vice governor, former city and town mayors and business people. Ballots are being cast at 1,296 polling stations. One is located in Saitama Prefecture, north of Tokyo. After the nuclear accident, many Fukushima residents evacuated there. During the election campaign, candidates held heated debates about reconstruction efforts. Key issues included decontamination work and ways to help those residents who were forced to evacuate. Japan's nuclear regulator has been considering implementing worker screenings to prevent terrorism. That proposal will likely be shelved and facility operators will be responsible for background checks on workers at nuclear plants. A panel of the Nuclear Regulation Authority has been studying the logistics of checking the personal information of workers, including criminal records held by the government and financial debt. But the panel concluded that a framework to vet such information would require revisions to current laws and careful planning. Panel members agreed that the utility companies that operate nuclear power plants should run background checks based on voluntary statements from workers. Some members pointed out the limitations of such a system. The panel is planning to study which items will be declared by workers and submit a proposal to the Nuclear Regulation Authority as early as January. FBI investigators have issued a warning to journalists from the U.S. and its allies. They say Islamic State militants are planning to kidnap people working for news firms from those countries. Staff at the Washington Post reported the warning. They said the investigators passed on the intelligence so media organizations can take precautions. The investigators obtained information that members of a group linked to Islamic State are under instructions to snatch journalists and take them to Syria. They said the militants may try to mask their connection with Islamic State. The investigators cited an Islamic State supporter who said anchors, field reporters and talk show hosts are among the targets. Islamic State militants have released footage that shows their members killing journalists and they've threatened to murder more unless the US and its allies stop airstrikes against the group. Now here's your three-day world weather forecast. People in France are getting a look at some major works by a legendary artist for the first time in years. They're flocking to the newly renovated Picasso Museum in Paris. Museum officials reopened the building on October 25th, the birthday of the late Spanish painter and sculptor Pablo Picasso. They say the building houses about 5,000 pieces by the artist, making it one of the biggest Picasso collections in the world. The officials closed the museum in 2009 for a refit that cost 52 million euros, about 66 million dollars. It was incredible. I have never seen such variety. I mean, it's a perfect show. Museum officials say they converted some of the office space in order to double the exhibition area. They decided to display the works chronologically to show how the artist's style changed. They're also exhibiting Picasso's collection of works by other artists, including Pierre-Auguste Renoir and Amadeo Modigliani. That wraps up this hour's edition. We'll be back with more news at the top of the hour. I'm Kaneko Satno in Tokyo. Thanks very much for watching.
Japanese shoppers stay home, forcing another downgrade for the economy. Chinese regulators crack down on price fixing. Foreign executives wonder who's next. And the tax man is coming. South Korean companies are under pressure to boost investment. Hello, you're watching Asia Biz Forecast. I'm Yuko Fukushima. The hard knocks keep coming for Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He's trying to revive his economic program, but political events and the economy are not cooperating. This week saw Abe shaking up his policy team for the second time in as many months. Two ministers stepped down for alleged funding violations, both of them women. That's another setback for Abenomics because, as you know, a key objective is to promote more women in the workforce. Then there's the economic data. It's going from bad to worse. Japan's economy came to a grinding halt after a sales tax hike in April. Growth plunged more than 7 percent in the second quarter. A lot of people expected the economy to start picking up by summer's end, putting the recovery back on track. But the latest signs are not promising. Household spending is still reeling from the impact of the higher tax. On Tuesday, supermarkets released their sales data for September, and they show a year-on-year -year decline for the sixth straight month. The steady drip of weak results has forced the government to downgrade its economic assessment for the second month in a row. The report for August said the reaction after a last-minute rise in demand before the consumption tax increased